Today we're going to be talking about some things you should not be doing to your RV. We're also going to cover some things that you should be doing that I just don't see mentioned all that often. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you guys a little tip that I use that'll help you manage all this information that's out there. Welcome back if you've been here before and if you're new to the channel, I'm Ross. I've been RVing for about six years now and this channel is all about teaching what we've learned over those six years. So let's get right into item number one. The first item on today's list has to do with non-hydraulic stabilizer jacks. I see it all the time. People have their RVs winterized in their driveway and they have their stabilizer jacks down. I would highly encourage that you leave your stabilizer jacks up. Stabilizer jacks are not meant to support the weight of an RV. If you lose air in your tire, whether it's suddenly or gradually, the RV is going to lower. You're putting excessive pressure on the stabilizer jack, which could damage or break the jack. Many owner's manuals will tell you to put down your stabilizer jacks before you open the slides. And if that's the case, you still want to be doing that. But if you're going to be away from your RV for extended periods of time, leave those stabilizer jacks up. There's quite a few options for RV water filters and there's no shortage of discussions on the different setups out there. However, there is one filter that I don't see mentioned that often and it's at your water pump. On most RVs, this filter is usually located right on the pump itself and it will just screw off. Now this is more of a debris filter than your standard water filter that's designed to remove things like fine dirt and dissolve solids. Its purpose is to catch anything before it enters the water pump and damages the diaphragm. Depending on your water pump usage, I would just check this maybe two or three times a year and clean it out if necessary. This next one I'm excited to share with you guys. You've probably seen the videos going around of the model car and trailer on a treadmill. If you haven't seen it, it shows you how different weight distributions affect sway. They all demonstrate on how putting 60% or more of your weight above or in front of your axles will help reduce sway while packing too much weight in the back of your trailer will increase sway. But there are a few problems with these videos. None of them mention the weight of the actual tow vehicle in respect to the trailer. They don't show how different speeds affect sway and going uphill actually reduces your chances of sway versus going downhill. There's a bunch of different factors that affect sway so I searched and found a phenomenal video that talks about all these different factors. This video is so good I don't feel that I could add any beneficial information to it. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this video. But for the purpose of this video I'll keep the tip simple. You want to be packing a lot of your RV gear above or in front of your trailer axles. And you'll see in that video that adding storage weight to your tow vehicle is a much better option than just stuffing gear in the back of your trailer. Now payload is always a factor so you want to make sure that you do your math but adding weight to your tow vehicle segues perfectly into our next tip. Most of us have the RV and the tow vehicle together all the time but there are many situations where you're in the tow vehicle without the RV itself. You're out camping, you lock up the RV, you head in the truck to go out for a nice dinner. On the way there you get a flat tire, no problem you have all the tools but now you're realizing that most of your tools are in your RV. So take a look at all of your tools that you keep in your RV inventory. If it's something very specific to the RV, like your PEX crimper, you can pack that in your RV. But tools and supplies like screwdrivers, pliers, socket sets, electric tape, those things might serve you better if you leave them in your tow vehicle. And as you'll see in the video link at the end of this video, adding weight to your tow vehicle will help reduce sweat. This next one comes from you guys. I have never personally done it, but I've probably read about 25 or 30 horror stories about what happens inside your RV when you travel with the roof vents open. For some aerodynamic reason, open vents seem to attract dirt and dust into your RV while you're driving. Again, this is something I have not experienced because I drive with them closed, but I have seen enough complaints to believe it's a real problem. So if you wanna air out your RV, it's probably best to do this once it's parked. Your RV black tank is not a septic system and because it's a totally different system, that means you need specifically formulated RV branded toilet paper. False. You do not need RV branded toilet paper. It's expensive. There's no evidence that it prevents clogs. And there's actually been some videos done showing that it decomposes or breaks down slower than just your regular household toilet paper. What you really want to get is a septic safe toilet paper. Either one or two ply is fine. We've used two ply for over five years and have never had a problem. I made an extensive video last year. I'll put a link at the end of this video. It's going to walk you through all the steps on how to maintain and keep your black tank 
clog and odor free. Skip the RV branded toilet paper and just go with something that's septic safe. Covering your RV over the winter is a heavily debated topic. Some people say to do it. Some people say it traps moisture in your RV. Personally, I don't cover my RV because when it's winterized, I'm still going in and out every day to make these videos. However, when my RV is winterized, I am always covering my tires. Keep in mind, RV tires are sitting for much longer periods than your daily driver, exposed to direct sunlight for longer periods of time. And it's important to keep your tires in the best possible condition so you can avoid things like blowouts. I'd also highly suggest that you use some type of protective on your tires when they're not covered. There's a lot of good tire protectants out there. Personally, I use 303. I think it's one of the best products on the market. I'll put a link down in the video description. It'll protect your tires from UV damage and dry rot. And while on the subject of rubber, it's also important to make sure that you're protecting things like slide seals, door seals, and the rubber seals around your window trim. The 303 will protect anything that's rubber, vinyl, or plastic. It's always nice to have one product that does multiple things. Okay, so this next one is very much common sense, but it is worth mentioning if you're not in the habit of doing it. Make sure you're using your roof vent fans when you're taking a shower. Over time, all that humidity can actually oxidize on metal fixtures. Additionally, RV cabinetry is not of the same quality as you see in your house. It's thinner, it's lighter, it's not always sealed, and excessive humidity can lead to cracking, warping, and paint discoloration. Mold can become a problem too. Fans are in bathrooms for a reason, Make sure you're turning that on when you take a shower to prevent these issues in the future. Now, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned a tip that I wanted to share with you guys that will help you manage all this information about RVs. There's a lot of great RV YouTube channels and information out there. You learned this tip over here and this procedure over here but how do you manage all this so you can actually apply it in real life? Now, I realize this is a very basic tip, but it's made RV life for us 10 times easier, and that is to make lists on your phone. Some of the lists we keep are maintenance procedures, setup and teardown lists, winterizing and dewinterizing lists, as well as full inventory lists. When I've learned something new, I just add it to the appropriate list. Closing your roof vents can be added to your teardown checklist. Putting your stabilizer jacks up can be added to the end of your winterizing list. Coating your tires can be added to your maintenance list. There really is a lot to remember when owning an RV and these lists will help simplify things so you can focus on enjoying your friends and family when you're out traveling. There's product links and discount codes down below in the video description to save you guys money, so check that out after watching the video. If you enjoyed or learned something from this video, please click that like button down below. We hope you consider subscribing and don't forget to click that bell so you're notified every time we release a new video. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you soon.